to radio uh, app. And uh, okay, so here it is. Here's what I've been teasing. <clears throat> um, turkey, by the way, don't underestimate turkey's uh, domestic military manufacturing capability. They make excellent small arms. Uh, they make excellent anti-tank weapons. They make an excellent attack helicopter. Um, they, they can take your old tanks, and, and with Israeli help, they can upgrade them to uh, a pretty uh, pretty credible, passable uh, sort of thing. Um, but they also have uh, Leopard 2A5, the latest uh, uh, Leopard tank. But uh, Turkey has an excellent domestic uh, arms industry. And they, they pretty much debuted it. All of you who were following me during the Azerbaijani uh, invasion of the Armenian enclave called Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh, that was the debut of drone warfare uh, as a major combatant element. And it was all Turkish drones. The, the Azerbaijanis had Turks physically on the ground operating Turkish drones. And they, they were pilot-directed uh, direct fire suicide drones with the equivalent of you, you would say like a 60 millimeter mortar head or slightly bigger <clears throat> and so if you could take a mortar and launch it and then have it loiter around for 30 minutes and then put a reticle put a crosshair on a um, artillery piece and then pilot it in there or at least designate okay where that cursor is go there that's what the Turks debuted and it was revolutionary, it was game-changing, but it would have happened because we have that technology, China does, others do. The Turks were just, they wanted to be, they know the value of being the first with the most success on something like that, and they did it, okay? Um, well, so, and but they have been, in many, many ways, they have been copying a Monrovia company. There, there is a Monrovia company called Aerovironment. Uh, so you have General Atomics down south near San Diego, they make the biggies, the MQ-1, the Predator, the MQ-9, uh, you know, the, 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 the whole thing. Monrovia's aerovironment, <clears throat> they make small uh, hand-launched surveillance drones. The one that I'm very familiar with was the aerovironment Raven. Uh, it was amazing. It, it took half a day to learn how to operate it. Uh, the, the guys who learned how to operate it then took an hour to teach the rest of us how to operate it. It was a battery-powered uh, drone like a model airplane. It had a full-color HD 10-power camera in the daytime. It had a five-power IR camera at night. And we could put it up in a firefight, circle around, see where the bad guys were. It was amazing. It was a game-changer, and you could feel it happening in real time uh, when we had those things up. But we were the first to say, why can't I drop a bomb on the guy? Or, or maybe I should ram him with this. And we're like, no, there's, those are like 6000 bucks. We only have three of them. Well, um, Aerovironment heard the troops deployed in 2004 and five, and said, uh, yeah, I know where the bad guy is because I have him on infrared. Why can't I just put the drone down his throat? And uh, Special Operations, um, I believe, is the or originator on that. And what, what came out of that a couple of years later was a thing called the, uh, the switchblade. And the switchblade comes in a tube. And uh, imagine that you have a big telescope over your back um, maybe about three feet long and about uh, six inches wide, right? Um, and that is the switchblade. And there you are walking along, patrolling along, along and then all of a sudden a sniper um, starts uh, shooting at you guys but missing. You get behind a little, a little hill. You take that thing off your back. You extend two little forearms, two little bipod forearms. You hook up this controller that looks just like a Xbox, you know, Sony a PlayStation controller. Uh, with a sun shield and a screen. Now you launch this thing and it goes, Bing! it shoots out of the tube and these wings fold out. And uh, it, it looks like a praying mantis head. It has all these sensors and there's an explosive charge right behind the head and you have about 45 minutes lo loiter time. It gets up, it goes, it starts flying around, get a little pusher propeller and <clears throat> you start searching for the sniper or the mortar uh, or whatever or the unicorn or whatever. Uh, you find it, and you kamikaze that thing down on the sniper or the mortar or whatever. But it's under human control. That's the deal. It is under human control. The Turkish system that they're debuting in Libya um, is not. And um, no one knows what to do about this yet. The Turkish military reportedly plans to buy more than 500 uh, quadcopter-type cargo series loitering munitions or suicide drones uh, in the near term. 
Now, this one doesn't have wings, okay? So it is, it is like, it, you know, a quadcopter for realtors or Hollywood or whatever. But this one has a difference. Um, it's, so it's, it's got four rotors and then, you know, four little stick legs. It's got a camera that can move around. But the body of it is actually one of three different warheads. Um, one of them is a, a directed charge, uh, a, a shrapnel directed charge. So um, you, you spot the enemy, you see where the enemy is. Now, on a, uh, or you suspect where the enemy is, now on a graphic program with a map, you draw a circle, like a 500 by 200 meter circle, and you tell the cargo, go there, if you see something producing heat or uh, that looks like a human, dive down on it. And so it goes there, and as ordered, it sees humans, it dives down, and then about five feet away, it explodes the shrapnel effect kills within uh, 10 meters. If, if you have a crowd of people sitting around a table, everyone at the table's dead. And, and the, hu the only thing the human did was tell it where to go and then launch it. And now for the Turks, I don't know if anyone ever raised their hand and said, okay, I, we know we can do this. Should we do this? Are we, we're taking the human being out of the decision loop, out of the, out of the OODA loop. Um, what if, what we suspect are four insurgents or four bad guys, whatever, turns out to be four kids. Then what? Because we're not even going to be there to abort. We, we're not even going to sit there and see what's in that square. You're just saying right now there's a report that there's enemy there. You're drawing a line. You're launching it. And you're not even looking. Um, and so, as you see, this may not end well. And uh, and so the, the good news, um, people are ordering them hand over over fist um the the turks are mass producing them they're cheap if we made something like this well and we wouldn't um but if we made something like this it'd be more expensive uh the drones can carry one of three different types of warheads including high explosive frag for engaging personnel or other unarmed uh, unarmored targets uh, a thermobaric type good for targets in confined spaces and a shape chart for attacking lightly armored threats the thermobaric one that's what's called a fuel air explosive <clears throat> in that it has a small liquidy charge um, and it has a, uh, when it goes inside of a building, it has a, it has what's called a small bursting charge and it, and it aerosols this Coke can, uh, full of explosive, uh, fuel air combo, right? Now it expands and it combines with the air and it gets ignited. And so what was the size of a Coke can now is expanded out to the size of a 55 gallon drum and it, it explodes with that volume. But what it does is it implodes first because of the, the vacuum, then it blows out. They're, they're really, really evil. The Russians have mastered them. We've never been really high on them. Um, and if it was in a drone coming through a window, you'd all be dead. And the building would probably be collapsed. Um, so anyway, there, apparently there's not a quality control of concept stationed in the, the, the Turkish um, the arms acquire or acquisition uh, system. But um, the, uh, the UN is looking into it, and they're wondering if there's already been uses. And the answer is yes, they have been using them in Libya like that, sending 20 of them to a different grid or square mile, square kilometer, and, and killing anything that moves in there. Uh, back right after this, it is the Dark Secret Place. Brian Suits uh, in here till 11 o'clock. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, 2021, KFI AM 640, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. And I'm feeling good. Six forty. It is a dark secret place. Brand suits uh, here until eleven, and uh, Memorial Day twenty twenty one uh, weekend. And uh, the Indy five hundred is uh, is scheduled. And last year, remember, it was cars only. I think, or, or was it canceled? I forgot. Uh, anyway, this year there's going to be one hundred twenty five thousand people in the stands for the traditional brickyard race, um, <clears throat> capping off our Memorial Day weekend. Uh, when we remember those who gave their lives in peace or in war uh, to defend our country, uh, the the uh, I don't I don't do like a this day in history thing, but two two interesting things uh, about uh, May twenty seventh and then May twenty ninth. Uh, May to, uh, I I never uh, never heard of this. Whenever there's a blind spot for me in history, I'll always say I didn't know about that. For instance, and so May twenty seventh, nineteen forty one. 
President Franklin D. Roosevelt announced a state of unlimited national emergency. He said, quote, we do not accept, will, we will not permit this Nazi shape of things to come. Close quote. There he goes calling everyone a Nazi. Um, but obviously, you know, you see what's happening in May of 1941. You're blind if you don't. In America still had this, uh, you know, large, it was like a 51% don't get involved in that war uh, thing. Um, and, and you go back to May of 1941, but, but, and FDR called up the National Guard in December of 1940, right? And so on December 7th, 1941, the National Guard was about to end their one year of mandatory active duty service. So they were already up and running. Um, and so next hour, by the way, one, one of my favorite obscure stories is, is from where I grew up uh, in Hawaii. And, and the story of the, the men of the 100th Infantry Battalion of the Hawaii Territorial Militia, as it was called, and the fact that Japanese were behind anti-tank guns on Waikiki, Japanese-Americans, uh, Nisei and Issei, in U.S. Army uniform, because they were U.S. Army soldiers, were behind uh, uh, anti-tank guns, machine guns, and they had been there for a year. And so if the Japanese had actually invaded Oahu, they would have been mowed down at the beach by... Japanese American. Um, uh, so then also on, on this date in 1942, and this is this is what's uh, I, 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 there's a mystery, and you can you can help me. Uh, the Stalin's foreign minister um, Molotov loved his cocktails. Uh, Vyacheslav Molotov secretly met with FDR on this date in 1942. Right, <clears throat> Molotov is one of two men who shook FDR's hand, Churchill's hand, Stalin's hand, and anyone? Hitler's hand. I can't figure out who the other one is. They, so they know that he, he, he hit the, uh, the grand slam of uh, world leaders. Um, so, so there's that. The, um, on May 27th, 1941, the war wasn't going so good for Britain. Um, the, 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 the Germans had launched their first and last airborne assault to take the island of Crete. One of the absolute, one of, of the beginning of a amazing cascade of absolutely idiotic decisions that the entire German military uh, participated in. And not one person ever thought that was a bad call. If they did, they didn't tell the fear. But it was a disaster, an absolute disaster. Problem was they won. They, the German airborne had a one to four disadvantage when they landed on Crete. But the British still effed it up with the thing. So they evacuated and it looked like, oh, the Germans, they're rolling. They've taken Crete. Well, it was so disastrous that Hitler never used paratroopers again. And the former world heavyweight boxing champion, Max Schmeling, uh, was one of those paratroopers. Uh, he was wounded, but he survived. But it's covered, sort of, it was covered up in, in the, pretty quickly in Great Britain because the Bismarck was sunk a few days later. And, and so that was sort of a, hey, never mind that, look over here, we sank the Bismarck. So, um, uh, so uh, there was that. If you haven't heard about this, I'm, I'm really curious what they think they're.